Hi everybody, today we are going to discuss about brownfield IoT deployment. So brownfield deployment refers to any form of software that's created on top of the legacy systems that are already in use. So brownfield is especially important in industrial IoT such as smart buildings, bridges and roads, railways and all the infrastructures it has been around for decades and will continue to be around for decades more. The software development counterpart of the Brownfield IoT is very challenging and that's why manufacturers and developers are reluctant to engage in it. So in this video we're going to look about it, finding a solution which is additive rather than replacing the core subsystems of the design, where we're going to keep the core systems of the design intact, where on top of it we're going to build the IoT. So what makes Brownfield deployment very challenging? So the first thing is integrating connectivity and data collection into designs that already exist. So this is one of the major obstacles lying in the path of Brownfield IoT deployment and makes it move at a much slower pace than it should, which holds back the industry from leveraging its enormous possibilities. The second thing is inheriting the hardware, embedded software and tool decisions that limits design flexibility, which is in industrial IoT, you must deal with a lot of machinery and infrastructure that already exists, such as roads, bridges, buildings, factories, power plants, oil rigs, all that, where replacements can cost millions of dollars. So established manufacturers are more inclined towards incremental development and the desire to change as little as possible. So established product developers that want to make the current production line smart don't want to throw away all the, the IP and start from the scratch because it's too valuable. So inheriting all the hardware, embedded software and the tools is a must. However, it just limits the flexibility of the software. The third challenge is making possible interoperability and coexistence between different platforms and devices, which means the developers need tools, platforms and standards that enable them to securely and efficiently connect their products to the cloud without the need to rely on proprietary sources. So I think this is one of the major challenges that we are going to face when it comes to Brownfield IoT deployment. And the fourth challenge is most of the legacy components are made before the age of the internet, which means many of those legacy components were in design with connectivity in mind, which makes the transition to IoT even more challenging. More importantly, most of these manufacturers don't even know the know-how and experience to develop for connected environments and often overlook very important issues that go beyond connectivity including security, scalability and interoperability. So here comes the question, why IoT? Let's look at the unique features of IoT. The first feature is worldwide access which is otherwise called connectivity. IoT establishes proper connection between all IoT things to IoT platforms. It may be the server or the cloud. So IoT provides bi-directional communication between the server and the cloud anywhere, anytime. The next unique feature is hybrid capability. So there is a need for an end-to-end -end platform that takes care of the hardware and software underpinnings of IoT connectivity, security and interoperability so that the developers can focus on the core functionality of their products without the need to reinvent the wheel. So this approach benefits both greenfield and brownfield deployment process and help unify the currently dispersed and fragmented IoT landscape. So the next important key feature of IoT is flexibility. Flexibility means reacting dynamically to dynamic changes. So the state of the devices keep changing dynamically from off to on um, or either connected to disconnected and all that. So these also can also mean that the devices, uh, the context of the devices including the location of the speed keeps changing. So moreover the number of devices can change dynamically so the IoT is really um, able to react to those changes and able to flexibly adapt to it. The next key feature is disaster recovery. The disaster recovery is not possible without a sensing device. So the sensing devices used in the IoT technologies they detect and measure any change in the environment and report on their status. IoT technology brings passive networks to active networks without sensors they could not hold an effective or true IoT environment. Next feature is security. 
So IoT security protects the internet enabled devices that connect to each other on wireless networks. IoT strives to protect the IoT devices and networks against cybercrime. So the next feature is scalability. So scalability means um, my system needs to be able to handle the data created by my current and future expected customer base. It is true that when running a connected business or really any business for that matter, you need to be able to serve your millionth customer just as good you did for your first. Scalability doesn't come without its challenges. If achieving scale was easy, we probably wouldn't be talking about it so much and we certainly wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So some products need capacity for more messages than customers and it can be hard to plan ahead for what you may need two, three or five years down the road. So IoT is able to provide scalability is a very important and a very unique feature. Now let's look at the limitations and deficiencies in today's IoT. So the first limitation is data collection, management and ownership. The next is security, trust, privacy and identity management. Third is safety. Fourth deficiency is integrability. And fifth is advanced data processing. Sixth comes interoperability. Seventh is advanced analytics. And finally, it's virtualization. Now let's look at the requirements and capabilities to overcome the deficiency in today's IoT. So the first capability that is required is connectivity. Connectivity in this case means a robust networking supporting the required latency and then supporting required protocols enabling multi-platform access and authentication. If these two capabilities are being achieved, then we can overcome the deficiency in the IoT, which is related to connectivity. The next capability is security. Security in this case means preserving the privacy in multifaceted and dynamic contexts, trust establishment, and more importantly, threat analytics and risk management. The next comes a memory. Advanced storage of performance data. Performance data means the latency, the memory utility, and all that comes under this performance data. Then comes advanced pattern recognition capabilities. So this is one of the most important capability that is required in this today's IoT. And providing support for non-relational databases storage technologies. So non-relational databases, it's really generally very difficult to store a non-relational database because you can't have a key and a word to it. So storing such databases is going to be very difficult and this IoT has to have the capability of storing non-relational databases. The next capability is sensing. Production of sensed data is very important and evaluating the trustworthiness of sensor data acquired from the devices. So we must be able to qualify which data is correct and which data is incorrect. So this is one of the most important capability that has been required. The next particular capability is actions. So when it comes to actions, it means advanced actuated devices with onboard processing capabilities to support decomposition, evaluation, condition actuation, which means each process will take a particular time and it doesn't happen on the moment spontaneously so it will take some time it will happen offline so whenever any process happens the decomposition evaluation and actuation has to happen spontaneously at the moment instantly so finally comes the processing advanced data storage technique is one important capability that is required when it comes to cloud storage there are a lot of storage methods that's been provided by the cloud services we need to use the proper and the desired particular storage for us for the cost effectivity and a lot of other things as well so we'll discuss about this particular data storage techniques briefly in our next video next comes the advanced data science capabilities so data science capabilities are nothing but analysis so advanced analysis of the processed data is also important um, so now let's look at how brownfield IoT deployment works. So in this particular layout, let's consider two layers, the factory layer and the cloud layer. In our case, the factory layer is just a database warehouse where um, we have a lot of 
servers database servers and these servers are being monitored continuously using sensors so these sensors are actually deployed to monitor the environmental data like temperature humidity and all that so if there is any change or an exit in the value is being detected then these sensors will alert the users through notifications so these data from the sensor has to be stored for future purpose and to monitor and maintain the data warehouse so each sensor will be connected to a device the device can even be a simple microcontroller these controllers will be sending data to the gateway or the edge devices which in turn is being connected to the cloud so the microcontrollers are not directly connected to the cloud because a lot of connecting points will lead to increase in the cost for cost effective purposes we use edge devices to communicate with the cloud rather than directly communicating with the cloud through the devices there are a lot of cloud services available in the market like microsoft azure amazon web services google cloud so the data from all these sensors or whatever device collects data those will get stored in the cloud so the cloud storage is again a vast classification which we will be talking about in the next video in the cloud services we can even use smtp to send mails to notify the users in case of there is any disaster or in case there is any particular uh, thing that has to be notified used to the users so i have indicated firewall in between the factory and the cloud layer just to show that the data that's been transmitted is secure and is being encrypted so in this particular layout i have used dotted lines and dots to indicate the direction of data movement that is from the sensors to the device from the device to the gateway modules and from the gateway modules to the cloud and in turn the, from the cloud we retrieve the data back through the gateway module and then it gets reached with the users that's how the data direction has been indicated so this is the overall working mechanism of any iot so let's now look at the solution architecture finally uh, this solution architecture is same as that i have shown in the layout on how it works so in this particular solution architecture we have the same kind of devices in the lower layer which in turn is being connected to a controller or any particular device in that case and these controllers are in turn connected to the gateway or the switches and these gateway or the switches they communicate with the cloud through a firewall layer this firewall layer is just to show that there is a uh, data encryption and there is data security so this is a very basic solution architecture that i have tried to depict to you all of you thanks for watching the video please subscribe and like this video and Please uh, let us know your questions in the comment section. We will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you.